Hey, it's AJ Merzad, and I'm super pumped. Why? Because I just finished the Resilient Minds podcast with my man, the main man, Eric Balance. And wow, you see this amazing state that I'm in. That was a conversation that we had. It was a beautiful flow state talking about the philosophy of life, business, success, wealth attraction, and serving people at the highest level. And I really love Eric for asking really profound questions, but also bringing about the, the container for massive insights. And I know you're going to love this episode, no matter where you're at, if you're just starting out or if you're at the top, because we always want to improve. And I feel that there's an insight every few minutes, just based on our conversation. And I would love for you to listen to it, take some notes, get some breakthroughs and share with us all of your wisdom and what you got out of it. Well, welcome everybody to the Resilient Minds Podcast. I'm here with an amazing man, AJ Mirzad, and this guy is a legend. You know, he's the author of the best-selling books, Master Your Inner Game, and the Mind Body Solution, Train Your Brain for Permanent Weight Loss. He studied exercise science and nutrition due to his passion for health and earned a master's degree in psychology due to his fasc fascination with the mindset of weight loss. His cutting edge approach to permanent weight loss insists that the key to a healthy body is a healthy brain. His clients walk in proof, and it's true because there's hundreds of them around the world. AJ, this amazing gentleman, has been recently inducted into the Personal Trainer Hall of Fame. His writing has been, has been featured in Entrepreneur Magazine, The Huffington Post, Men's Fitness, Thrive Global, and Bodybuilding.com. AJ is also a keynote speaker at high-end entrepreneurial events around the world, and he's also known at, of the, as the, from the popular podcast he has, the Online Super Coach Podcast. So make sure to check it out on, on iTunes. Along with you know, all of this amazing stuff, he's inspiring lives of general public, and he's dedicated to helping coaches create ethical and profitable online income through his business mentorship program, OnlineSuperCoach.com. Check it out. So, AJ, welcome, blessing. Good to see you, my friend. Woo! Happy Woo! to be here, Eric. Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude, I'm happy. We were having some Facebook issues there, and look, we made it happen, man. I'm yes. so pumped. It's aligned. It's, it's aligned, man. Well, dude, it's, I'm, a, I'm grateful to have you here, bro, and um, I'm just excited to, you know, really connect and continue to, you know, evolve this friendship to the next level. But as you know, the, the podcast, you know, the Resilient Minds, we've all been there, you know, as entrepreneurs, as as people that, you know, continue to want to thrive and build influence, we all have our, I always like to say X factor our, or our experience, right? And I really believe uh, myself that that contributes to our biggest Y factor. Um, so if you don't mind, AJ, you know, telling us a little bit about your experience as you've kind of evolved, um, because I'm certain that it's always been a perfect, uh, just, you know, easy road, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that, I think that, you know, there's so many people that out there that would love to hear a little bit more about your story for those that don't know you and maybe those that, you know, know you, but haven't heard about it yet. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me again, Eric. Pleasure to be here. And, uh, I think the, the best way to sum up what you just said is, you know, every level in life, new level, new devil. And, uh, you know, I, I think the biggest thing that I've learned throughout this entire experience is that the higher your threshold for pain, the more success you're given. And I find that the people that usually are on the top of their game in any industry, they've had so much pain and challenges to overcome, you know, whether it's in business and athletics and in, in fame, there's always challenges that, 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 that come the way. And I, myself, you know, I came to the United States. Uh, my immigrant family bought me here when I was a year old. We were from a war torn country, refugees. And, we're dirt poor coming here, face a lot of challenges. Of course, the cultural barrier, the language barrier, you know, growing up, it was challenging because my father, you know, doing the best that he could with what he had, he had a hard time acclimating into the new country. So he started to drink and create a lot of challenges for my family, myself, my mother, we experienced a lot of domestic violence and that really shaped a big part of my childhood, growing up in a very violent atmosphere. As I got older, I didn't really know how to 
deal with a lot of this pain and uncertainty. So I got into drugs and alcohol, heavily abusing it to the extreme, getting drunk, blacking out, doing drugs like cocaine, crystal meth, ecstasy, just everything, painkillers all at once. And that led me to have a horrible youth of overdosing, ending up in the ER numerous wow. times. Wow. You know, at the age of 26, I actually had a near death experience where I was in a coma for a week. And that one experience shaped my entire life. That's the only time where I actually realized that my, my life is very fragile. I could have died, I survived, and I, and I took it as a sign that I got a second chance. And from that second chance, I had the ability to improve my life. You know, the same uh, energy I use towards negative and destructive actions, now I use towards positive actions. And that day turned my whole life around. You know, I started my, my online business. I started to coach people. I gained more confidence. I actually stuttered for the first 20 years of my life. So I had a big dream of wanting to speak and get on stages. So overcoming my stutter, gaining more confidence, and then finally being in a place where I could help other people, that was the best feeling in the world. And, you know, going through a lot of those challenges and hardships, I really feel uh, humbled me, but also made me realize that if I'm dealing with that much pain and no one really knew it, no one knew what was going on inside my house behind the scenes, you know, millions of people are dealing with pain as well. So I realized, you know, everyone is fighting a battle that, that we know nothing about. Yeah, dude, that's, that really resonates with me. Cause as you know, like, you know, we've, we've been through a very similar struggle, um, you know, especially when it comes to, to the using. And I think that that's, that really like hit me like right, right in the heart, bro. Um, and you know, there's so many people out there, I think that, you know, maybe are battling something currently, you know, maybe if it's not related to, to using or, or drugs, maybe it's, you know, you know, being, you know, alcoholism or, or negative depression or uncertainty or all of this, that it really is about creating something bigger and, and seeing the, 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 the brilliance in the current circumstance that can take us to um, evolving to this next level. So how long ago was it when you started AJ? Um, you know, really developing this confidence? And what was that turning point for you where you gave yourself the opportunity to be like, listen, was there, was there a moment? Was there a myriad of them? Was there, you know, a, an expression or somebody had said something? Because for myself, my father, it was like, what, was, what are you going to do for your future self, right? So maybe for me, that was a defining moment. For you, is, is there something similar or something different or something unique? Yeah, you know, uh, that, that, that uh, near-death experience that, that put me in a coma, you know, it was, it was a horrible experience where I was pronounced dead. They brought me back to life, and I was in a coma for a week. And during that time, you know, I was fighting for my life, but also experienced, like, uh, life and death. You know, I, I, the whole, like, white light, my whole life flashing in, uh, in front of me, and it was a really surreal, crazy experience. It literally felt like it was seconds, but I was down in there for a week. And in that time, you know, my friends, my family, a lot of people came to pay their final respects. They thought I was going to be brain dead. They thought I would never be the same ever again. So it was a very sad experience. And little did I know I was, you know, knocked out the entire time. But I remember waking up from that coma and my mother was next to me. She stayed with me the entire time. She was crying. And the doctor, he was a very caring gentleman. And he started talking to me and said, you know, you, you, you went through a very difficult experience and you may not make sense of it right now, but I'm gonna give you a book. And I want you to read this book with an open mind. And I know it's gonna change your life. And at the time, you know, I was partying, I was you know, doing a lot of toxic things. I didn't read any books. The only books were books I were given in schools. I was not a recreational reader. And the book that he gave me was The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And I remember being in the hospital recovering and reading that book line by line and learning about the ego learning about the present moment, learning about this uh, entity called the pain body. And I'm like, whoa, this is what killed me, my pain body, my ego. I'm the cause of my own destruction. I am not a victim, but I'm the perpetrator. I'm the one who's causing all this pain. So how can I now live in the present moment, watch my ego, I cannot delete my ego, it's always gonna be there, but learn how to manage it in a more constructive way instead of destructive, toxic, killing myself, how can I become a better man and help more people and change the world? And that one book created this curiosity in me. And I remember that, that one year come, coming out of the hospital, I read 20 books, you know, no books prior to that, 20 books on my own accord. And also I started a journal. I've written in that journal every single day since then. And I really started to work on my personal development. Um, 
another friend of mine gave me this CD and it had all the greats on there. Uh, Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, Les Brown. And that CD changed my life. I'm like, whoa, this information exists. You know, we all could go to that, that first taste of personal development. You know, mm. the moment you experience like, wow, I can be positive all the time. I can achieve anything. It's like the best feeling in the world. And, you know, that, that, that one week coming out of the hospital, that's when my whole life changed. Wow. And now when you, when that, when that week was, when you were out of the hospital, what transition that made you now be like, I need to follow my, my why, my purpose, my, my, I know the direction that I need to go. Was there, was it, was it clear immediately or was it like, you know, was it like in the distance? Did it seem like there was, it was really dark and uncertain or was there like clarity, like color, like creativity? Yeah, you know, as I mentioned, like it was a spiritual experience, especially the, the near death process and having my whole life uh, pass in front of me. I was literally fighting for my life. Like I was knocked out. So, so, you know, in my mind, it was like, I want to live, please let me live. I was, I was crying for life. And when I came out of that, I literally felt like I got a second chance, you know, higher power granted me this amazing privilege. So I set a goal coming out of the hospital and I, I, I call it a sober streak. You know, I was like, let me go as long as I can without any drugs or alcohol. I want to learn how to get high off my own supply. You know, that was, like, yes. that was a big goal. <laughs> yes. And um, I remember like a, a friend of mine that we used to party and do a lot of drugs together. I once, once asked him, and then this memory came up when I came out of the hospital. I said, you know, I really love this euphoria when I take drugs, but it, it goes away and I crash. How can I be euphoric and peaceful all the time? Is there a way to accomplish it? And he said, you should try meditation. And that was the first time someone ever mentioned meditation to me. And I went on Google and I started reading all about it. And that's when I realized, like, maybe I should start doing these practices while I'm doing my sober streak. You know, every single day on my uh, journal, every single day I write, you know, sober streak one, sober streak two. And I was just doing it day by day, but day by day I was building more confidence. I was building this chain. I was doing breath work and meditation. And I was literally learning how to get high off my own supply. It's a common, it's a common um, practice, you know, um, I feel like now as we, you know, our reticular activating systems have become encompassed in that it's like, well, yeah, this is actually common. So many people that are in the same world are doing this. So we've been on this. How has that belief really helped you changed of, of where um, you've seen yourself continue to move forward now? Because the meditation, the, the inner being, the stillness, the centeredness, I find that is a, is a really common denominator among uh, successful entrepreneurs, among thought leaders, among pro athletes, among people that, you know, that, that, that I've spent the time, you know, interviewing. And it's, it, it's a common denominator. So what for you, and I'm curious, and maybe a lot of people, I'm certain there's a lot of people on here that are, you know, listening right now, either live or, or will listen back you know, that what is it about that belief system that has helped you continue to find the energy within to move forward based off of that practice? Mm, yes, that's, that's a great point. I think, uh, you know, for a big part of, of my life, you know, prior to that near death experience, I was always searching for the external. I needed external substances, people, experiences for me to enjoy my life. So to go out, I need alcohol. I need to have a buzz. I need to have a few shots to be straight. If I go to a club, I have to pop an ecstasy, take some ketamine, take some GHB. It was like, I need these things to have a good time. And, you know, the week before I, I ended up in the hospital, I was going through a severe heartbreak. A girl I was dating rejected me. I needed her. I really needed her to be in my life because I'm incomplete. So I believe, uh, Within that time of getting high off my own supply, I came up with another mantra, and that is needing nothing attracts everything. And I realized, like, I do not need these things because all I need is already within me now. So I could go out and just be free and be silly and be this sober dancing fool, and no one knows the difference, right? I don't need a girlfriend to complete me. I could be happy, single. I don't need to have sex with random women to feel fulfilled. Right. Because all of these things are more destructive habits, because if you have an addictive mind and you say no drugs, no alcohol, you'll find sex, you'll find food. You can even find, 
you know, exercise. People are running, jogging, you know, miles, miles a day. So I had to learn how to harness this mind, but also realize that I need nothing external to bring me that peace. Wow. Yeah. The, in, the internal belief within and how we can continue. I really love that. Needing nothing attracts everything. I wrote it down and creating that um, within yourself because I found Byron Katie said something. She said that once you become um, like the, the path to enlightenment, it's, it, there's an element where you realize you don't need anything. Mm. And once you can have zero anxiety about losing it all, you all of a sudden attract pure abundance. Yeah. Fascinating. It's fascinating. Yes. I love so, Byron Katie. Definitely. Oh, so. Shout out to her. Yeah. <laughs> she's amazing. She's amazing. So, you know, um, AJ, if you could tell yourself, you know, uh, somebody that has maybe started, you know, is, is maybe yourself 10 years ago, or if somebody's at an element right now where they're, there's a lot of like, you know, uncertainty and pain that they're going through maybe, and they're looking at a lot of external conditions um, rather than the decisions within themselves. What would you tell them right now? You know, I think um, some of the best advice I realize is, is do the opposite of what you're doing to get the result. And I learned this when I was, uh, you know, I was overweight when I was younger and, uh, the first big challenge of personal development was losing weight. So I lost 60 pounds to get in shape. And it was a very tough struggle. And a lot of the things that I did that were counterintuitive started to work. For example, we all know you hit a plateau with your uh, body fat and your muscle. So oftentimes doing the opposite gets you the result. So in the case of being on a strict diet plan, having a cheat day, eating carbohydrates and sugar and shocking your metabolism, right? If you're not making strength gains in the gym, you do a week off, you do a deload. So stop working out, let the body recuperate, you come back stronger and better. I'm burnt out. I'm a workaholic. I just can't be in front of the computer screen, take a vacation, get out of the office, take a walk in the park. So oftentimes, if we're trying to do something, try the opposite of it, right? What got you here won't get you there. And it's just looking at if I'm approaching this problem with the consciousness that I currently have, like Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it. So get out of your mind, get out of the environment, look at the problem with a new lens, and there you will find an insight. Dude, I'm writing notes. Like, uh, <laughs> I like so much value, bro. Like, I hope everybody, if you guys are writing notes, I'm writing notes because there's tremendous value. Can you say that again? You cannot solve a problem. You cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it. With the same consciousness. I love it. With the same consciousness that created it. It's, it's, it's so true. And there's always a new step. It's, 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 Tony says, consistent and never ending improvement, right? And it's, it's fascinates me because you're right. It's like the way, in the way that you actually put that, you know, you now shared it it really brings like a whole new awareness to it's so powerful when we make this decision to evolve in our conscious delivery, in our conscious being, in our, in our level of awareness. And I think that that's, that's so profound. So describe the process of your consistent and never ending improvement. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, I think everything starts with a daily routine, right? So, I have a morning routine, afternoon routine, and evening routine. And of course, that always changes as I discover new knowledge and learn new things about myself and, and the human body. But a few staples that I have every single day is journaling, you know, writing down what I'm most grateful for, my wins from the previous day, time blocking, you know, setting out all the things I need to do hour by hour. Eight, I got an awesome interview with Eric. So preparing mentally, did a meditation, you know, cleared my mind, came in fully energized in a peak state. I'm here for you. So it's kind of like, um, I, I, th I, I think it's Moore's law, but it's essentially yeah. anything you plan within a certain designated time gets done in that designated time. So it's, you know, I find time blocking the day before planning is tremendous, especially if you have a business, you have a lot of obligations. And of course, constantly learning, you know, whether it's an audible audio book, 
I have YouTube premium so I can turn the screen off and listen to great stuff on YouTube, constantly learning, but also having the right uh, ratio, right? I believe 50-50, create as much as you consume. So I've been really good at getting knowledge, right? We're having a great conversation right now. And similar to you, I'm writing down notes. So you blow my mind with a massive insight. So I like to capture that idea, either film a video, go into Facebook Live, or write a post about it. Because while the idea is fresh, I'm going to add my emotion, add my insight to it, especially if I'm doing a video. So I learn, and then I teach. And it's like, um, you know what comes up to me when you say that, learn, teach? Um, best students are, are teachers, best teachers are students. And then yes. also I, I think of, I think of, um, oh my goodness, I just missed it. But it, it was, it's just like, it becomes an element of if we're not, um, knowledge is not power, knowledge is potential power. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? It, it's, it's, it's the coolest thing, right? It's, it's, if we don't do anything and apply it or take action to it, then it means shit, it means nothing. Um, yes. It, so, you know, you clearly have like a, a powerful set of values, AJ. You clearly, you know, you've, you've implemented, you know, a lot of these, you know, routines or, or rhythms as Steve Weatherford has called it, you know, dubbed it. Uh, and rhythm has become like a really cool thing um, in your life. And what are these values and how are they showing up in your work, in your daily rituals, in your daily life? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think uh, one of the biggest changes in my life came when I really found out my life's purpose, you know, and uh, for a lot of people, sometimes it's this big grand notion. Oh my God, what's my life purpose? I need to know my life's purpose. And a lot of it for me is really just being present to the moment, acting with love, always having a grateful heart. But my main goal as a human being on this earth is to inspire people into action. So that is my mantra. How can I inspire into action? I literally loop that in my head over and over and over again in my bathroom mirror, inspire into action. In my journal, I'll write a hundred times like Bart Simpson on the blackboard, inspire into action, inspire into action. So that being my purpose, on the top of my mind, I'm always thinking like, how can I inspire people that are listening to this podcast, every conversation that I have, Every time I write a post, how can I get them to get off their ass and do something to live a better life, start journaling, start meditating, to start a business, to start putting out videos, adding value to people, start making offers and being paid for your work. So I look at my life through that lens and whatever career I have, you know, I started off as a personal trainer and then I became an online coach. Now I'm currently a business coach. I run seminars and events and Every single thing, whether I had that initial client lose 10 pounds or help someone add $100,000 for their business, I'm just inspiring them to take action so they can actually do the damn thing they've been putting off for so long. And I think that I love this. I love how you just shared the whole um, transition of your process. You know, you, you started, you know, at, 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 a, at a, you know, a personal trainer. You and me have a very similar journey. I love this. Like personal trainer, you know, and the evolution into the online world, right? So tell me, because people sometimes they don't see a clear vision, right? They don't know where they're going to go and they're scared about taking the next step. So what do you share with your clients? You know, if they're starting out or if they're a little bit in, what do you share with your clients to get shit going, to get shit done, to just do it? Um, because I think that there's a lot of people that through the element of uncertainty, they just decide to stop and not do it because they're scared. Absolutely. You agree? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, that's, that's, that's a great point, you know, and, and this is like we, 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 we were just talking about, you know, the, the internet. I think the uh, internet started like 1996, you know, and most people are getting on in the late 90s, early 2000s, America Online, that was huge, and it was getting people on the internet. And that was dubbed as the information age, right? I think the first 20 years of the internet is the information age. Now we are drowning in information, so now we're going into the tra transformation age, where the people who make it to the top aren't the ones that are teaching information, but they're helping people with implementation, okay? Mm -hmm. Because right now you can go on Google and you find any nutrition plan, workouts on YouTube, you wanna start a business, there's so much literal business uh, plans. Here's how to market, here's how to sell, here's how to build, but 
people aren't millionaires with six packs, you know, in Lamborghinis, you know, the majority of the people are struggling with their weight, with their finances, with their relationships, with their own personal happiness, because they don't know how to implement. So back to that, what is my life's purpose question? You know, I used to drive myself crazy to figure that out because sometimes it's like this, um, you know, question that, that brings about a lot of stress. You know, it's like when I find my life's purpose, then I'll be inspired, motivated, wealthy, and happy. You know, it's an elusive thing. So what is my life's purpose? To be here now with Eric, have this amazing conversation, speak from the heart, don't let my head get in the way, be in a place of love and gratitude and humility, and just share whatever comes out through this conversation. We have this amazing synergy, your energy, my energy, whatever's coming through is our life's purpose. It doesn't have to be this big grand thing in the present moment, whatever we are doing, doing it with love and being in a beautiful state is our life's purpose. And if you just focus on that and have a clear mind, a clear mind is a creative mind and a creative mind brings you a lot of success in life. So rather than trying to always think of 10 steps ahead, it's what do I need to do right now in this present moment to move forward? Because then all my bandwidth is crystal clear on that inspired action rather than filling up with all this nonsense that is not serving me in the present moment. I love it, man. And that's the, that's the thing is like, sometimes we make a decision based off the fear that's moving that because of where, because we're thinking 10 steps ahead rather than thinking right now, even if it feels right, we get in our head and we're dead. Right. Yes. Um, well said. You know? Well said. So yeah, dude. And it becomes, it becomes, um, it becomes scary because I know, I know, I don't know about you, but in my experience, there's things that I missed out on because I didn't, because I stayed in my head, you know, oh. because I, I made, I made poor decisions, poor choices, uh, because I wasn't aware yet. Right. So yeah. Um, the overthinking mind is the demise of the human being. You know, we are all inspired by a massive idea. And sometimes, you know, ignorance is bliss many times because when you're inspired by an idea, you go and take massive action, even if it's in the wrong direction, you're failing forward. Right. And I, I, I will admit it many times. I lost so much opportunities, so much business uh, endeavors because I had a really big idea. And then I start overthinking. I'm like, all right, I'm on step 10, 11, 12, step number 15. Oh, it's not going to work because of all these possible failures, these fears that may not happen. So that idea just, just never takes off. You know, it just stays in my mind. And then someone else comes up with the same idea, becomes a billionaire because they were the ones who, you know, stepped into the arena and took the action. Yeah. And, and so many people have this. Do you find that there's so many people out there that maybe have an expertise, but because they get stuck in imposter syndrome, they, they, they start comparing themselves so much to people, you know, that are maybe 10 steps or five steps or three steps ahead of them, rather than being excited about where they're at. So how do you, how do you, what would you say to somebody that, you know, maybe is doing that comparison and doing that analysis paralysis um, pr process rather than just being inspired about where they're at and, and being grateful about where they're at and about, about being excited about that journey? What do you say to some of your clients or, you know, to anybody that, that, that really asks you, you know, what's the next step or, or, or why yeah. me or I, I can't do it, you know? That's, that's a brilliant question. And uh, I think about a book that I read uh, years ago. It's called Willpower Doesn't Work. And the main premise of the book is that you can have all the willpower and all the discipline, but if you're in the wrong environment, it's never gonna happen. And Jim Rohn, RIP, he has one of the greatest quotes I live my entire life by. He says, you are the average of the closest people in your life, your health, your wealth, your relationships, your happiness. And I learned this lesson early on. You know, Once I built my business and it was becoming profitable and I started investing in coaches, mentors, and masterminds, you know, I, I was listening to this podcast, it's the, the I Love Marketing podcast, and uh, Dean Jackson and Joe Polish, they're the host. And Joe is one of the greatest marketers who ever lived. And he was uh, talking about this group, the 25K group. And I remember listening to that podcast in this elusive 25K group, right? You're going to be in this group with multi-millionaires, a few billionaires, and you got to pay $25,000 to be a member. And I had this dream of being inside that group. For some reason, my heart, my intuition says, I need to join that group. So mm -hmm. um, basically... He had like this uh, meetup in New York where I live and it was kind of like a meetup, AKA sales event. You come yeah. and if you like it, you join the group. 
So I was already a fanboy, and I was like, I'm interested in this, but $25,000 is a lot of money. So I ended up going there, and I was just blown away because all of these heroes, you know, I was reading their books, listening to the podcast. You know, they're, they're on the news doing these great things in the world, and I could be in a group of them. Hell yes, you know, and it was uh, very strict guidelines to be inside there, and I kind of slipped through. It was like, you got to be a millionaire and pay $25,000. I wasn't quite a millionaire, but I had the 25K. And I remember when I was having the audition and I had to transfer $25,000 from my bank account into theirs, I was like, holy shit, this is a huge wow. decision. You know, it's the most money I've ever paid, but it was the best thing that I ever did. Because once I invested into that mastermind, I went into the first meeting where I was the lowest guy in the totem pole. And it is really good when you're the dumbest person in the room. I like to be the dumbest person in the room because I'm, the, I'm in the smartest, I'm in the wrong room. So I was kind of insecure, right? These people are making a million dollars per year, $10 million, a few hundred million dollar earners, a billionaires in the group. And we go and have lunch and I'm super insecure. These people are so smart. They're so talented. And once we started eating and breaking bread, I realized, wow, these people are no smarter than me. You know, they're, they're just regular people that take a lot of action. You know, they're not super intelligent. They're not, you know, geniuses or at the top of their class. They're just people that, that work hard, take consistent action and implement like a madman and a mad woman. And once I realized that, I was like, holy cow, I need to implement more. I'm a lazy bastard. I'm not doing enough. So from there, I started taking and making the right moves, learning from the mastermind, getting the conversations. And the most important thing I got out of it was a self-belief that I'm worthy of being a multimillionaire. And once I shifted my identity and I started to, I guess, synergize with my peer group, the millionaires in this mastermind, all of a sudden my income started taking off. I started getting more opportunities, possibilities started coming in. This guy's doing a seminar. I will do a seminar. She wrote a book. I'm going to write a book. And all of a sudden being in that peer group, I started up leveling like crazy. And I realized like, wow, you know, I leapfrog sometimes maybe five, 10 years ahead of where it should have been, but just yeah. being in that group of people, having that synergy, being around people that were far ahead of me, it forced me to grow. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. I can so relate to this and, and like, so relate to this because the same thing happened like with the, with platinum partners with Tony, right? Like, holy cow, was I scared, man. And I'm telling you, man, it was the most uncomfortable, scariest feeling in the world. But wow, you're so right. When you put yourself in that proximity and people are willing to hold you to that outstanding standard that now you know that you want to be at with intention, anything is possible. And, and that, that myriad of growth, the myriad of relationship, the myriad of opportunity that starts to come into, you know, your life as a result, you start to see the abundance. And I totally relate to this, bro. Thank you for sharing this. I think there's so many people here that like really needed to hear that. Really yeah, no, that. It's, it's a great reminder for, for us as well. It's like, you want to up level, yeah. keep finding like the group of people that are doing what you want to do and health, wealth, relationships, happiness. Like who is that? You know, you obviously create a higher standard being in yeah. platinum. Okay. New standard, right? Yeah. Now, you aspire to work harder and, and, and always surround yourself with those right people. That's the fastest way to grow. Absolutely, dude. Um, listen, you, 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 you've shared so much brilliance, right? So much opportunity, but I'm, I'm certain that you, 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 you know, at the same time, you know, you've probably run into so many people that, um, you know, individuals that may have opposite or different views from you. How do you respond to that or how do you deal with that? You know, that, that's a great point. I think uh, one of the biggest mistakes that we make is thinking that other people think the way we think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, over the past few months, uh, here in the States especially, there's been an extreme polarization in politics, in race, in mask, no mask, right? There's just so much debates. And I do not fall into the crowd of, of debating with people or getting angry. I'm so curious. I love learning. I have an extremely open mind because if someone presents me information, I will change my beliefs. My beliefs are not rigid. I have very loose beliefs. If you tell me something that changes a piece of information that I had in my entire life, I'll go with what you say because I'd much rather have a mind that's open by curiosity than one that is closed by belief. So that being says, 
Um, I've learned this a lot, especially in my relationship, you know, because we all know when you're with someone, you have different personalities, you have agreements, disagreements. And I often find myself being in a place where she has one belief structure. She thinks a certain way. I think a different way. And rather than saying, I'm right, you're wrong and fighting for days about being right. I say, you know what? Let me take this from your perspective. And here is my perspective and the ability to, to, to communicate with someone and shift perspectives by shifting your belief structures. That's the most beautiful and powerful thing ever. So it's really helped my, my relationship. It's helped me with my business and people that have uh, d differing beliefs. You know, I'll never unfriend someone because they disagree with me or they believe something differently. I have something to learn from them. So I just open the communication and conversation with an open mind. Dude, and and it's, it, it comes really down to, to, you know, evolving our relationships that way. If we, if you stay in an open mind, it's easier to, to create better relationship, open relationship, you know, so that, you know, there is better communication. And I'm certain that it doesn't just affect your, you know, your romantic relationship, but your team and your clients and, and anything like this. Would, would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like uh, I mentioned earlier that, you know, my father, he was an alcoholic and he was very abusive verbally and physically. And it took me a lot of years to forgive him and to love him and actually say, you know what? I'm grateful that you were like this because if you were not like this, I wouldn't be the man I am today because I went through so much pain and challenges. Now I want to help more people. You know, if I had a different childhood, I'd probably have different results. But I realized that um, my father did the best he could with the level of consciousness that he was at, you know? He's not into personal development. He wouldn't listen to this interview. He wouldn't go to a seminar or read a book. He's at a certain level of consciousness. So I respect and love him for where he is because he doesn't want to expand his consciousness and that's fine. So rather than getting angry with someone, I, 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 I try to be a peaceful, loving, kind, but sometimes I realize the level of consciousness that they're at will never understand what I understand and that's totally cool and I'll just let them be. Dude, you've given us such a like path to success. Um, and I'm very grateful. And I'm certain there's everyone here that's, that's super grateful as well as listening. What would be one reason why people fail? Of course, the big four letter word, fear, you know, fear of failure, fear of, you know, looking bad, not looking good, scared that you're going to fall flat on your face. And, you know, I, I literally uh, did a video about this on Instagram that there's so much people that, that are just scared of the opinions of others. And I think my life changed when the balance shifted, that my desire to serve and inspire people into action overpowered the fear of what other people thought about me. Because I hesitated on videos for many years. I never published a book, never did a seminar. I was so scared to launch my business because I, I, I was scared of what other people think of me. What if I publicly announce something and then next week I fail? Grand opening, grand closing. This guy's a loser. He could never make it. He's, you know, he's, he's stupid. What the hell was I thinking? Why, did, why was I so scared? And that, that, that literally ruled me. It put me in a prison of the fears of, of what other thought about me. And I feel for a lot of people, unfortunately, most of their goals and aspirations come from the fear of failure or the fear of looking bad. Wow, dude. Fear is a, fear is a big, big um, indicator. And I know that so many times it's like, we all have it. We all have it. And um, I think, but if the, the difference is if we can create the courage to really do it anyways, you know, push through the fear, um, it becomes so profound. And, and I get really excited about that because there's every day, I'm certain that you still have fears, AJ, but you push yes. through. Yes, yes, yes. It's so true. And, uh, you know, if you look at the, 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 the greatest and most uh, powerful people in history, they were able to handle massive fear, huge risks, and they put their life on the line, they put their business on the line. You know, I was just reading about Elon Musk and how every company started, he sold it down to the last penny, started the next one and kind of just went all in. And thankfully, most of them uh, were very successful. He went from a regular person to being worth close to a hundred billion dollars, right? With all its companies uh, combined. And he wants to take us to Mars, you know? I'm not gonna fail at that, I'm gonna take this huge risk. So it's amazing. It's very inspiring to see the, the, you know, we all have fear. It never goes away, but it's, you know, peeing in your pants is fear, but courage is doing what you need to do with peeing in your pants. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. hundred um, percent. AJ, 
if anybody is, you know, right now looking to, you know, really connect with you, because I want to be conscious of your time. Um, what is the best way to connect with you, to find out more about you, to find out more about some of your programs, way to connect about your podcast, any of that, where's the best way to find you? Yeah, sure thing. You know, my main hub is onlinesupercoach.com. And over there you have all my podcasts, my books, uh, my, my seminar schedule. I also have a lot of free courses on there. If you do not have an online business and you want to build something, I have, I have a free seven day course that goes from zero to $5,000 in one week. And it gives you everything from the marketing, the sales scripts and the step-by-step -step process. And it's free of charge. You know, I just want to get people started. And then once you get started, if you need more help, and more than happy to get more resources, but onlinesupercoach.com, that's the main hub. Beautiful, dude. And, and I'll share it into the, into the show notes for anybody that's, you know, driving, listening, or, or watching live right now. Um, so, bro, I have one last question for you that I ask all my guests because I want to make sure, you know, uh, we always ask this profound question. If you had three days left to live, what would you do? If I had three days left to live, I would do exactly what happened when I had my near-death experience. You know, when I literally was in the ER and I was about to go under, it was like, I'm going to die. It was that my mortality was faced. And I really just thought about one thing, and that's the people that I love. You know, I was not thinking about anything else, but I was making sure that every single person that I truly love with my heart, I got to tell them that I love them, and I got to express to them how I feel. And I feel that if I had that same urgency three days left to live love is the most important thing you know i would just go out to every single person or even using the power of social media using my podcast using all of these amazing platforms that i have and just spread as much love as i possibly can and i think about it, i'm gonna die in three days i'm gonna just do videos and pot and just literally not sleep and just share as much love as i can so i create something that survives long after i'm gone legacy man i love it dude uh aj i just want to um you know sh share you know my gratitude with you thank you for coming on the show it was a blessing to have you do you have any last statements or shares that you want to yeah you know i i really just want to acknowledge you for doing this show because i you know we, we connected recently and i started uh diving into your podcast and you know checking all your stuff I started stalking you and uh it's it's like a, a like-minded brother and i appreciate what you're doing the energy you have, the passion, the just the inspiration that helps so many people. And I'm just grateful for our friendship and I'm grateful just to be here because this entire hour was joyful for me. You know, I, I literally just changed my state. I'm feeling full of love, full of flow. And you have an amazing way to be a catalyst to bring that out of people. And I appreciate you doing that for me. AJ, that means the world to me. I really thank you, man. I, um, I'm very grateful, very humbling um, to hear that. So uh, yeah, I, I have so much respect for you, man. And I'm just excited to, to see where, 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 we're, where we continue to fly and, and help co-create this amazing planet. So Yes, cheers to that. Cheers to helping more people and uh, yes. just being the best version of ourselves. Absolutely, brother. Much love to you. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk soon. Blessings. Peace.